notes before we begin. First, uh, we will continue to incorporate your prayer requests into the prayers of intercession when it is time for, for those. And so I invite you to use the chat button at the bottom of your screen. I'm just typing your prayer requests and those will be read out loud at that portion of the service. I also invite you to set up an altar, um, perhaps a bowl of water to remind you of our common baptismal heritage, um, perhaps a candle to remind us of the light of Christ among us wherever we are. And for those of you who picked up palms this week, I invite you to have those at the ready. But if you're joining us for the first time or you did not get a palm, uh, remember that on that day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, people were scrambling and they were climbing the trees to find something to wave. And that's how we got the palm branches. And so um, if you have a houseplant, um, if you have some artificial flowers, if you have something at the ready that can be waved during the hymn, that is perfectly acceptable and you are welcome to join the procession in that way. Please do not feel left out. We bring ourselves and what we have um, as we come to worship this morning. And so we'll take a moment and light the candle and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. invite you to take the palms that you have as we bless them this morning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen.
children. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray out loud together. O oh God, you give us the king we need. May we follow where he leads, even when it is not where we want to go. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Boys and girls, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. His name is Lammy, and he's a little bit shy. So I hope you'll take a moment to say good morning. Hey, Lammy, will you come out for a moment? Hi there, everyone. I'm Lammy. Happy Palm Sunday. We're going to be doing an activity together. So boys and girls, and maybe even grown-ups, go grab your palm branches. Andy is going to teach us how to turn the palm branch into a cross. So go get your branches. We're going to have lots of fun. Thank you very much, Lammy. Now to emphasize, if you have any challenges, don't worry. We will be having a, uh, uh, an opportunity to go through this again at our coffee hour. So if it doesn't go well now, there will be the chance to make your palm branches later. What you want to do is take your palm branch from the wider end and measure out about one hand distance. We'll fold from the bottom, like so. And this becomes the top of your branch and the top of the cross. Next, what we want to do is use our thumb to figure out how high to fold the long side. Notice what I'm doing is I'm taking this piece and I'm folding it sideways. It looks like a corner. We're now starting to create the sideways part of our cross. I fold across like this, boys and girls and adults. And then I take this side and I fold it back to the center. We're very, very close now. This little piece here, I'm going to wrap around through the center any way that it goes around like a braid. So eventually we end up with an X. And then if I can, I'm going to try to poke that piece down so that it doesn't flop all around. And there you go. A little bit floppy there, but good enough for a first attempt. This is how you turn a palm branch uh, into a palm cross. We were asked to do this twice. I'm now going to take a smaller piece of palm. That smaller piece of palm has fallen away and I can't find it, so I'm very sorry. If you do want to go through that again, uh, there will be a palm folding uh, section at our coffee hour after the service. Uh, Lammy says he wants to say bye to the boys and girls. Hey, boys and girls, if you made a cross and it's working right now, go ahead and go put it in a window or by the door where people can see it right now. But if it's falling apart, don't get mad. That's okay. You can join us at the palm folding table during coffee hour right after the service and someone will help you. Bye. And now we transition to our prayer of illumination. Dear Lord, we pray that during such a challenging time for so many of us, that you will provide us a peace that doesn't make sense. We ask that you speak to us during this service and throughout this upcoming Holy Week that we remember the path that you chose to stand 
in the gap for our own sins and shortcomings. Please help us to care for one another. Please help us to trust in you. Bless this reading. In your name, Lord. Amen. A reading from the Psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, um, Willie and Jack and, and Amy for that beautiful piece of music. And now we hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I remember um, going to lots of parades as a kid. I remember Fourth of July and Memorial Day and Halloween. Our little town um, in Carlisle, Pennsylvania had, had parades for all sorts of things. And, um, but my favorite, my favorite happened every year after Thanksgiving, before the Christmas season. Me, my brother, and my sister and I were shoved into our snow suits, wrapped up with our scarves, mittens with the little strings securely, um, and we were hauled off to Main Street for the Christmas parade. Ah, oh, it was glorious. School marching band, Police and firemen marching in perfect lines, dignitaries and officials riding on the back of convertibles, and that was so cool. They were shiny and bright. And at the end, ah, oh, the end was Santa. He was perched on a fire truck, blaring its horns, and he was he rode straight into the center of town, where he disembarked at the square and walked in to his little building, watching the waving of throngs of children, his little workshop where he would remain until Christmas Eve, just awaiting our visits. The crowd was so excited. We would push to get to the, the front for the candy that the firemen would toss and parents hoisted the tiny little ones on their shoulders so they could see. And I know I have glorified that moment in my heart and in my head, but I was a kid after all. And I know that in those delightful moments, I vowed I would never again fight with my brother. I would never again take my sister's mitten string so that she would punch herself in the face. I vowed I would be good as gold because in that moment, I couldn't take my eyes off of the majesty that was parading in front of me and I couldn't wait to enter that little building myself and be able to tell that man how good I had been and how I deserved everything on my list. It's not unlike the parade that was going on at the other end of Jerusalem, at the western end of Jerusalem. All the city was gathered for pomp and circumstance with glamour and military might oozing down the boulevard as Pontius Pilate himself in a chariot led 
this entourage of soldiers, a real show of Roman imperial power. Foot soldiers, men on horses, armor, banners, weapons, beautiful leather saddles on horses, golden eagles held up on poles and the beating of drums and the blaring of trumpets. Ah, there was awe and wonder and a little more than a little terror. Now that's a parade. That's a parade with the stomping of feet and dignitaries waving from their chariots. And at the head is the governor crowned in all his glory. So guess as far as fanfare goes on that day, the Romans win the prize. Pilate is the Santa in the story. The man who rides through town getting all of the attention and press for this whirlwind gig. Other than though a wave of the hand, there's not much interaction. And we know he's coming into town to judge the condemned as good or bad. There's no staying power with Pilate. He's just a flash in a pan. When Pontius Pilate arrives in the city, he goes into his palace far removed from his constituents, hiding behind walls. But we know, we know about that other parade on the eastern side of town. A far different parade as riding from Bethphage and Bethany into Jerusalem, it's Jesus who is the main event. There are no soldiers, there are no trumpets, there are no chariots, there's no glamour or glitter or might. Just ordinary people lining the streets rather unprepared for what's going on in front of them. And so they send the children scampering up trees to find branches to wave. And then the awe of the moment and the awe of the presence of the one upon whom they are pinning their hopes. Well, it's Jesus who proclaims God's rule over and above the Roman Empire. It is Jesus who will bring justice and mercy to their lives. It is Jesus who is their king. There's so much impromptu excitement on that little street. And as we read this story, as they watch the parade unfold, so many stories of scripture are coming to life right before their very eyes. There are all those unyoked, consecrated animals, that cult, evoking a remembrance of the law. The cult alluding to the king's procession in Zechariah and evoking of the name of the Lord, the most exalted of titles. The cloaks and the leafy branches, reminders of Israel's royal processions. It's a virtual who's who's parade directly out of scripture and Jesus is the centerpiece. As far as parades go, it's a little sad. There's no blaring fire trucks, no candy to pick up, no marching band, just a bunch of peasant tossing palms and cloaks and an ordinary guy in ordinary clothes in the center of the street. But my money, my money is on that sad little parade because Jesus has staying power. Jesus is faithful. Jesus will continue to walk with the disciples and mingle with the people. He will one last time in this coming week, pull up a chair for one last meal with his friends and he will offer them himself in the form of bread and wine. He will stand before Pilate and be unjustly condemned. And he will be sent off for another parade, 
another tragic parade through the streets of Jerusalem, where it's just he and Simon of Cyrene who carries the cross for Jesus. And while that crowd will scatter, Jesus will remain the crucified centerpiece for the entire world to see. No, folks, there won't be any candy, but Jesus' life will be poured out for the salvation of the world. So I might have fond memories of those childhood parades. But um, as, if, as if God was sending an affirmation to me this week about finding Jesus outside of pageantry and glamour and what is considered an acceptable parade, the other night I witnessed something where I'm pretty sure I found Jesus. I just want to share it with you. There were no fire trucks or glitzy convertibles. Instead, across the street from my house, I saw a lot of traffic, unusual, of course, at this time, and cars were honking. They were still gritty and dirty, but outside of windows were all handmade signs, and occasionally there was the balloon bouncing from a child's hand in the back seat. And apparently, Apparently, it was the birthday of a, a small child um, somewhere down that street. The neighbors were out circling the median in solidarity and celebrating a milestone. A lot of waving and honking. Honoring, of course, social distancing rules while still loving one who was in their midst. It was a beautiful little parade filled with love in the midst of a world on lockdown. And that, that just reminded me of the parade we celebrate today. So Jesus walks in our midst. Jesus is in our homes. He doesn't need to be in our sanctuary and he doesn't need blaring of drums, nor does he need the smell of incense. Jesus desires rather that we gather in love as best as we can, that we offer ourselves just as we are at our dining room tables or on the sofa with a cup of coffee, with car horns or with our solitary off-key singing, with a lovely home altar or maybe surrounded by toys that are scattered on the floor. It is there that we find Christ today because Jesus has come humbly to us as one of us to bring us life and salvation. And it is in Jesus and Jesus alone that we find our hope and our light. Amen.
let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. As people once raised palms, we raise our song and prayers to you, O Lord. As we look to you for deliverance through this crucial week, assure us that despite the pandemic, you are always with us and your promises are true. Beloved King, hear our prayer. A donkey bore the weight of the world's deliverance. Please show us the value of humbling ourselves, serving one another, even when we're separated from afar. Beloved King, hear our prayer. Even in the midst of anticipated sorrow, even to the point of death, we have hope that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We pray that you will send us hope during this challenging time. Beloved King, hear our prayer. Be with all those who have lost their jobs to layoffs and furloughs. Do not forget those of us experiencing illness and fear during this time of physical distancing and separation. Send your healing to those whose names we bring before you as we say them aloud at home and as we type them in the chat box. We lift the following names especially. Beloved King, hear our prayer. During this Holy Week, join us as one fellowship of witnesses to your faithfulness, both living and departed. Beloved King, hear our prayer. Hear now the deepest desires of our hearts. We lift up a prayer of gratitude for everyday blessings, for safe water, kind friends, enough food, and access to reliable information. We pray for the nurses and other healthcare workers in our community. We pray for the Sotek family and the passing of Vinny. We pray for Lisa and family. Beloved King, Hear our prayer. 
accept our prayers and hear our cries when we call to you. We ask these things in the mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now dear friends, receive the blessing. Now is the acceptable time now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Before we share the peace with one another, I'd like to remind you that when you are finished with the peace of Christ, you may join us for coffee hour you will have to leave this meeting and go um, to the next meeting. That will be on your screen momentarily. You may also use the link that's been sent to you in your email or that you find on Facebook. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another using the chat window.